Hi everyone, educators, parents, and friends. Welcome to my channel. If you are new, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, my name is Dr. Blissfall, and I am here to give you tips and tricks on elementary education. I am also the author of the book, Breaking Free of Bullying, where I give strategies to keep your kiddos and you safe, happy, and emotionally well. Uh, the last segment, we talked about five reasons why you might not want to be in teaching. And the purpose of that, even though it was framed negatively, is to keep in mind that if you are not 100% committed to kiddos' well-being, emotional, first of all, in my opinion, physical, um, academic, but mostly emotional, then you're probably in my opinion, you should take a different career path because um, being there for your students is the number one reason to be in teaching. It is a grueling job, but it's also very rewarding and you really need to be passionate about it. So if you are going into teaching because you think the hours are great or you have summers off, you have a lot of holidays off, you probably need to rethink your mindset and maybe pivot a little because there are great careers in education that aren't completely uh, congruent and aligned with students in the classroom. So you can still have a good impact, but if you're not, like I said, 100% loving your kids, your students, or being around them, um, then you're doing everyone a disservice, especially our kiddos of today and the future of tomorrow. Today, I wanted to talk about bullying since I am the author of Breaking Free of Bullying. I was on LinkedIn and saw a couple of sites about workplace bullying. And I myself have been bullied in the workplace as a teacher. Not in the beginning when I was young. Uh, I was very excited and motivated and I had uh, a wonderful administrator. She was the only good principal I actually ever had. Her name was Christina Witham. And she, I think, lives in Texas now. And so if you happen to come upon this video, Ms. Witham, I think you're amazing. And you, you taught me so much. And I think, you know, having a good leadership, good leader is everything in a school, in any organization, but especially in a school. And she used to be called the warden. And the reason that she was called that is because she was hardcore. I mean, she was firm, but she was fair. And, you know, she knew her job. She knew her job upside down, backwards and forwards. And she respected those teachers that worked hard at their profession. The other thing I loved about Ms. Witham is that she was secure in her ability to lead, whether we liked it or not. And she um, wasn't threatened by anything that I wanted to do to advance my career. So I was like a reading specialist, and then I became a supporting teacher and a mentor teacher. And I was getting involved in all these activities because I was learning it at the same time. So I really wanted to utilize it. And she really supported me and fostered that development. But she low-key was scary. And I think it's okay to have a little bit of fear with your leadership, Just, um, but you also need the support. I would much rather have uh, an administrator who was firm and told me straight out how it is rather than some, which most of my other female administrators would be nice to my face and stab me behind the back. We'll talk more about that in another segment. But today I thought it would be a really good idea uh, for you newbie teachers, um, well, especially like first through five years on how to avoid being bullied in the workplace. Now, there is no research-based evidence on this. This is just my personal opinion on some strategies that you can use to avoid being bullied by parents, by administrators, by colleagues, and, and whatnot. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the number five reason um, that you should um, try to avoid to work bullying would be to never take a disgruntled phone call in your classroom. So if you answer the phone and then secretary says, it's Miss Yada Yada, 
and you know she's irate if you ask, you know, what is it concerning? And secretary tells you, you know, she's upset because blah, blah. The, the minute you hear she's upset, angry, wants to discuss, blah, blah, blah. You say, um, can you tell her to please hold on? And then you run your ass, dead ass to the office and you take that phone call in the office. Do not have a conversation with Miss Yada Yada on the phone alone ever because she's probably recording you or she probably has her husband or significant other on the line listening to you. Trust me, I have had parents low key on the phone say, you know, uh, why are you raising your voice? Why are you yelling at me when I wasn't making the other person on the on the other side thinking that I'm being belligerent and rude? Okay. One time I did take a phone call. Um, unbeknownst to me that the parent was upset. And she did accuse me of being rude and, you know, hollering and raising my voice. So I totally lied and said, well, um, I'm really not raising my voice. And Miss Smith is right here with me. Um, would you like to talk to her? Um, and she could verify that I'm not raising my voice. And she low key like hung up on me. So I don't know what possessed me to say that, but I did because, you know, there was, I was alone in the classroom, but I had had so many problems with these parents lying and saying that I'm raising my voice when I wasn't. It's like, okay, if you hate me, then move your kid out of my class. Like, your kid's not going to be happy. I'm not going to be happy. You're clearly not happy because you can't stand me for whatever reason. You know, give me a legitimate reason and I'll work with you. But if you don't like me because, you know, I have long hair or I wear it in a bun, you know, that's that's not justification for, for lying and, and making up rumors. So always, always take a phone call in the office. Do not take it in your classroom unless, of course, you have a trusted adult with you. And that really goes true for anyone. So if you are, if a colleague, if a colleague is upset with you and they want to meet with you um, in the classroom, either lie and say you're busy and you can't do it right that minute because you, you need time to think or immediately say, you know, I'm not really sure what is it regarding. I'm not really sure I feel comfortable having this conversation with you, but if you would like to do it in, you know, Mr. Johnson's office, I'd be more than happy to do that with you. Or if you would like to meet with our supporting teacher or someone like that, then again, that's what I would do so that it's documented. You never want to meet with a disgruntled anybody, um, so so it's just her word or his word against yours. You always want the third party for documentation. If an administrator is calling you in, you have the right to ask them what it is regarding. A good principal like Mrs. Witham would say, bring your union rep with you because she really cared about her staff and her teachers and she's doing her job because somebody is complaining about you or there's an issue. But she low-key really cared about us, and she would tell us straight up, bring your union rep. And then you knew, oh, shit, I'm I'm in trouble. This is not good. A bad administrator, and I'm going to use the word bad, horrible, an administrator won't give you the heads up. And that's because you already know they don't like you or they want to see you sink. They're just shady. Just know that. And just because it's education doesn't mean that people don't get really feisty and competitive, like in the fashion world or like in a competitive, like PR or law firm or whatever it may be. Educators too can be really shady and um, a corporate ladder climber in administration. They maybe they want to work at the district office and do nothing and get paid a lot more. So always keep that in mind, especially if an administrator is super, super nice to you, like red flags go up. Okay. Talk about red flags and relationships with significant others, there's red flags in the workplace too. So always have someone present when somebody wants to speak with you. Okay. And if they can't do it, just say, no, I'm not meeting with you until I have my union rep available. And that's it. So if they're doing that, you kind of already know they don't like you and they're trying to get rid of you. And there's no rhyme or reason. You know, they just don't like you. Or maybe the parents don't like you and they just, they're just they tired of the problems. So we'll get more into that with your questions 
Yeah, so it's a lot. Okay, the fourth reason um, that you want to avoid to, we're going, I'm going backwards, so five, four, um, to avoid work bullying is to never gossip. Um, especially like if you're in, in the staff room or if you're in the bathroom, that's usually where, or in the hallway, that's usually where teachers like to gossip because there's, uh, there's no like people around, you know, but you never know who's around the corner and you never know who's your friend and who's not your friend. So if somebody starts dragging somebody else, whether it's a parent, administrator, or colleague, you need to say, oh, I forgot to make some copies or, you know, or just step out, you know, um, but make an excuse to leave. You don't want to be around um, that kind of talk because if an administrator walks in and you're nodding your head and somebody's gabbing about, you know, gossiping negatively and you're sitting there gabbing your head or chiming in, that administrator is thinking that you're just like them or they always catch the second person. So you want, you want to just avoid that at all costs. So just, even if you don't say anything, you're still part of it. Like I had one, one teacher, she never said anything bad about anything else, but whenever gossip was there, she was always there to listen. So my mom always said, you got to watch out for those quiet ones because they're sneaky. Uh, let's see. Oh, and another thing. If teachers are talking about other teachers and parents, when you're not there, they're talking about you because that's just who they are. So always know that. Especially if you're one-on-one -on -one and you have a teacher friend, teacher friend that's always bitching about another colleague, low-key, they're doing it to you behind your back. So try to distance yourself and realize that's a red flag, that's somebody that's toxic, and I need to remove myself from that situation. I'm just going to keep it professional and only speak to them when it's regarding work. Okay, the third thing, going backwards, so five, four, three, um, keep your staff room lunches to one or two times a week. And I was told this and I didn't listen. You don't want to go into the lunch room every day and have lunch because you are who you hang out with. So if you are constantly around the same people that all they do is bitch, you know, that, oh, they have more work on them and the administrator did this and the administrator did that and you have more workload and you have all these negative attitudes, I'm telling you, eventually you are going to start acting like that as well because you are who you hang out with. And the reason I say, you know, some people say, don't go in the staff room at all and eat your lunch. And the reason I don't say that is because then that's another reason for them to talk about you. Oh, who does she think she is? Oh, she's too good for us. She doesn't want to come and eat lunch or socialize. Oh, you know, who does she think she is? And then they start making up things in their head because you're not there to defend yourself. So go into and have lunch one or two times a week. That way you're still social. You're still acting like you're engaging, but you're just letting them know how overwhelmed you are, that you need to go, you know, do your stuff. And then when you're in your classroom, don't, don't work. I mean, I, adult teachers do this, you know, we're always grading. We're always never not grading, right? But really take some time to really eat and enjoy your food and meditate or listen to a positive podcast. That will really help shift the energy, put some nice music on. So don't avoid the staff room at all. One or two times a week, stagger it. And then the rest of the time, just focus on positive energy. That's a really good way to avoid a workplace bully. Number two, never tell a colleague or your principal no. Especially if you're a new teacher because they're feeling you out. So, um, Mrs. Witham say, would you, um, we don't have anybody for this committee. Would you consider doing it? Now, if you're really strapped, like going to school, you can say, let me think about, can I think about it? Or can I get back to you instead of just saying no or yes or over committing, right? So a good way around that, especially if you're principal and they should know that you're in school, if you're still in school, but in your master's or whatnot, just say, can I, can I get back to you? I need to check my schedule in school. 
but don't ever tell them no and don't ever tell a colleague no. Hey, could you help me out and make this copy? Absolutely, of course. You never want to tell anybody no unless you have a really good, legitimate excuse, even unless you're completely overwhelmed because I know I know that saying no is really hard for people, but then you also want to set that boundary. So it's going to take some practice. But until they get to know you, just all the time, just, oh, absolutely, of course, whatever I can do to help you out, principal, oh, I would love to, can I check my schedule first to see, you know, if I, if, if my school's not overwhelming. That way they know that you're, that you really want to participate and you really want to help them out, okay? And then the number one reason or the way to stay away from being bullied at work is to, um, Double check your principles. What did I write? Double check your principle. Find out, listen. This is when going in the staff room is, is kind of useful if you could get tidbits. But keep in mind, it's everybody's perspective. Never befriend your principal. Always keep it professional. They're not your friend. And if they act like you are, they're using you. They want to manipulate you and they want to put you in a place where they can, that you're disposable. So they're going to use you as much as you can, as they can, and then um, talk trash about you and try to get rid of you if it gets too hot in, in the kitchen, kind of, so to speak. Uh, also, communication style. Try finding out how they communicate, how they interact, um, but they're not your friend. Don't ever, ever become friends with your administrator. They will, excuse my French, screw you over big time. You're, indis you're, you're dispensable, you know, you're disposable. So that's the best advice I can give you because if you're constant, and you'll see those teachers that are in the teacher's office every day, kissing ass, kissing ass, kissing ass. And that's all good and fine. I was never that type of person. And that's why a lot of principals didn't like me, but I came in when I needed to. And then I usually don't, and I never ask my principal for advice regarding another teacher uh, because then they could use leverage around you and they maybe will give you bad advice. And I hate to be so shady and negative, but remember, this is about you. You are the teacher. You're the new teacher. You're the most important um, person in a child's life other than their parents and their family. Okay. You need to be there for them. And if you're passionate and all these things, you're going to have to really manage that. Um, uh, and you can't do that if your principal is being a total jerk and they just don't like you, but we'll go more into administrative stuff in another session. But for the purposes of this, this segment, let's review. So five reasons why to avoid being bullied. Never take a, a disgruntled phone call alone or have a conversation with a parent in a room alone. Always have another person present. Never gossip in the staff room or the bathroom if, <clears throat> or, or nod your head. If they start, if they start getting gossipy and start getting negative, excuse yourself. Next one, um, keep your staff room um, a visit staggered. So if lunch, go once or twice a week. The rest of the time, stay in your classroom. Again, if you're there every single day and it's a very toxic environment, you're eventually going to turn into that toxic person and you're going to be very negative. If you stay in your classroom all the time, the teachers are going to be judging you for like, whatever they want to say about you because you're not being social. So you want to have that nice balance. Once or twice a week, you know, hi, oh, engage, blah, blah, blah. you know, fake it. If you have to for a little bit, remember, you're the most important thing. You're not there for them. You're not there for your principal. You're there for yourself and your kiddos. Okay. So keep that in mind. So if you ever feel guilty or that you're being too like skeptical that's okay because you're the most important thing in that child's life other than their parents. And you're there for the kids. You're not there for the other teachers. Um, never tell a colleague or principal no. And then finally, do not befriend your principal. 
do not ask them for advice unless it's professional. Do not ask them uh, about another colleague or anything like that. Uh, I've done that and been burned so many times about advancing or being teacher of the year or whatever, and they don't like you. Um, they're going to do everything to destroy that. So I hope that this was helpful to you. And as you go into the new year, you go in with a fresh outlook and a fresh perspective. If you're a teacher going into this profession, these are some things to think about, not even just in the school setting, but in any environment. You kind of want to keep these strategies in mind. Uh, I am feeling... Uh, blissfully excited that I have given you this information and I hope you have a wonderful new school year going back. You know, you have a couple days left off on winter break and until then, shaka and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.